would you do if I died, Dad? Would you cry? I don't think I'd ever stop. <gasps> oh. <gasps> Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno. Well, there's certainly no cracks in this film as we attend the UK premiere of Broken. Archie, it's Tuesday. My wages. Um, can I play you tonight? I promise. I'll be out in the back. No, no, stop. Hi, guys. It's been really, really lovely. And of course, you know, we all know what the climate's like and how difficult it is for these things to kind of uh, poke the head above the parapet. And it's been wonderful that it's had the response that it's had internationally and, and you know, it, it, particularly at the Biffers recently. And with regards to the story, you're predominantly known um, as being a theatre director. You directed Festin uh, on stage. Is there something, and this is another sort of very family relationship based um, screenplay, what is it about? family relationships that, that entices you that you want to explore? I don't know. I come from a family. Uh, I, I, think, I, I think, you know, within, within any family or a small community, the great themes of, you know, of, of tragedy and love and uh, fear, protection, all of those things, parenthood, um, aspiration, they're all played out, really. You can, you, you can explore those wonderfully in a, in a huge story, but often it's... Um, the more focused in you get, the more focused the, the, the actual heart of the story is. And you as a first time director now um, in film, what's that whole experience been like for you? What have you gained from it creatively? Well, it's I mean, enormous amounts and, um, and I hope it's the beginning of a, you know, a, a bit of a, a steep learning curve that you know, I'll get the opportunity to continue with a bit of luck. Um, yeah, it's completely different from theatre in some ways. In other ways, it's exactly the same. You know, you're, you're dealing with story, you're dealing with good actors, and um, and those things don't uh, don't really shift much. Of course, the ways of telling that story and how to how to get those actors to to communicate that, also knowing when to let them do what they do. I don't know very much about film. Tim Roth and Killian Murphy know a great deal, so knowing when to just sit back and let them get on with it. Um, and knowing when to step in, that, that's been part of, the, part of the big learn. I don't know, it's hu huge amounts. It's wildly different from theatre in a lot of ways. And I just wondered as well for you sitting, you know, in an edit suite even, you know, because it's not obviously theatre is instant, it's there, and it truly is in the moment. Yeah. Um, so for you, once you've got all your, um, all the, the footage together, for you then to sit down and go through that process of breaking it down and putting the pieces of the puzzle together, what was that like for you? Well, it, I mean, in a way, the edit process is the most enjoyable thing. In theatre, we open a show and then you've got four or five or ten performances maybe to fix it before all the press come in and you get hammered in the national press. Um, whereas with this one, anyway, you have 12 or 14 weeks. Most importantly, with somebody who really, really knows what they're doing. Victoria Bordell, who's the editor on this film, is absolutely wonderful and really educated me. Um, and then, yes, it's incredible what you can do. If you've got it in the bag, and mostly we did, I think, have it in the bag, you can move it around and create, create a story or a film or a way of telling it that you didn't, hadn't even imagined before then. So that was really, from a creative point of view, really, really fascinating. The, the film is a very dark, emotional film at times. It's uplifting, but it does have quite traumatic experiences for that character. In reality, when you're shooting them, they're not traumatic at all. It's much more a question of saying, look, you know, when you're going through this terrible thing, try not to laugh. The things that she found traumatic were when she had to kiss the 12-year-old boy. Of course, that's what she was dreading the most. You know, the stuff that we think, well... Um, so it's more about, I think it's more about, with that, to be honest, I think it's more about making sure that they don't feel too spoiled, that they don't go out of the experience craving uh, having 40 or 50 adults around her all day, pampering her and making her feel wonderful, because that's... You know, she's got to go back to school, and she has gone back to school and got on with her life. She's a great kid and comes from a very, you know, wonderful, wonderful set of parents who, who both know the business and have looked after her really well, I think. You dirty pup. Hi, Rick. Hi, Scott. Hi, Mr. Oswald. Hi, right, darling. <laughs> 
You know, you wouldn't think I would have got it because it was just, we just had connections, me and the director from my mum. I went out for the audition, not really knowing, not fully prepared. And um, that, that later that day I got a call. And, you know, from then on we were filming and we were all kind of talking about behind, um, back, well, not <laughs> backstage, um, how the film probably wouldn't do as well as it has now. And it's such, do it's, you know what, I think that was the best way to think of it because it's such a surprise now how well it's done and we're so proud of it. Well, it's, it's the, the first time you've worked on a film and you, mm -hmm. you had no aspirations of being an actress either, did you? Well, I liked, the. I loved the whole idea of being involved with acting you know performing for people but music always appealed to me just that little bit more because I, d I could be a bit more creative with it um, but I did I, I you know I loved acting and everything. It must have been a real education because obviously you're working with such um, a strong cast I mean yeah and, yeah so how has that affected how you feel about performing as, as an actor now? Well, do you know, my mum never introduced me to those actors and I think that was a good thing because if not, it would have been a completely different atmosphere back, um, you know, on set. But um, I'm thankful that she did because I, yeah, I acted so um, cool around them and they helped me so much. They gave me tips. They just said like, and I don't know, they were just like, you, you know, you can do that if you want. They were very, very helpful and they helped me adventure with my, with my acting. And, and the part of Skunk, what was it that when you read the script, what, what did you like about her? I don't know, I just related to her a bit. I liked her creativity, her innocence and everything like that. And, and working with Rufus, what, what was that like? How did he help you? Because it must have been daunting on set when, with the cameras rolling. Yeah. So how did he help you relax and, and, and just enjoy performing, really? He teased me. We just joked around the whole time they cut and he would mock me for my performance and that just kind of encouraged me to make, I just wanted to make him think, you know, not say that for once. So, you know, that was probably a good thing as well. I don't get it. Why is Rick the one they arrest? Get the straight jacket! He hit him really hard, Dad. Do you want to stay with you until you fall asleep? That's okay. I want to press charges, Mr. Buckley. I want to go home. The thing that was in the script that he, he basically had a breakdown from a beating like that, which can happen, but obviously it's quite an extreme reaction. You know, not everyone would react like that. <coughs> Excuse me. And and he, you know, that was in the script. Why does he do the things that he does? And those are the questions that we asked. We didn't necessarily label it with he's this or he's that, but it's just that he's the sort of he's a fragile person that can break at any moment. So building someone like that back up is kind of sort of tentative. You know, yeah. You're working with Rufus, who is predominantly known for being a theatre director. So how did working with somebody like that, that, that really they say theatre is, is the medium for, for actors, how did that help you carve your character working with somebody like that that knows and thinks how actors work? Well, I mean, he's a brilliant director because he's so generous with his direction and he makes you feel like you're, you're doing it right along all the, time, all the time along the process. So anything you offer up you know is, is always a it's always a yes but do it this way maybe this time so you always feel like you're achieving something which is nice did you have to just follow the script were you allowed to sort of improvise at all yeah there were like yeah there were moments of kind of things that we developed in the film that weren't necessarily in the script especially around the last scenes with Eloise Skunk's character and my character in the bedroom you know there's a lot of stuff that we developed in there along with the basis of Marco Rose's script, yeah. Because obviously the film's had great success already, sort of looking back from when you were filming it to where we are now, what's been the kind of most sort of joyful part of the journey for you and being a part of Broken? Um, I think the most amazing thing has been, um, I say amazing a lot, it's really annoying, um, but I think the most amazing thing has been uh, the friends that I've made from Broken. Um, you know, it doesn't o often happen actually, but we've stayed in touch so well as a as a cast and and with Rufus and everyone because there was gen, genuinely a lot of love on that set and I've not felt that before and that was a really lovely experience as a as a young actor I know things have been tough for you since Barbara passed away you know for you and for the girls I wanted you to know that you know if ever you wanted to talk talk Blue is where I want to be Do you want to be my girlfriend all right are you in love why can I of course then why aren't you married yet <laughs> I hadn't really read a script like it before because it's it's 
based on just one road. So the fact that there's not loads of characters and there's not a massive set, but it's still so much is going on and it's just really interesting that so like it was like dominoes, like every, it just hit everybody and every, everything madness was going on. And so it was yeah, it was really that interested me. I think when you read a script and you can't put it down, that's when you're so yeah, that was a good sign. That was a good sign. <laughs> and, and, and the character that, that you're playing, can you tell us more about her and what, what really you connected to with her? Um, yeah, um, her name is Saskia. She was the el one of the older sisters um, in the family. A uh, bit of a nightmare, uh, <laughs> but um, she was very interesting to play um, because she's so gritty. Um, it's really she wasn't boring to play she was always feisty and really getting into his loads of energy all the time I just loved playing her it was just yeah it was nice to be able to just swear and say whatever you want and it was just like yeah but that's part of it so it's fine <laughs> well, look, she's, she's a bit of a bully isn't she just a bit just a little she's not that bad <laughs> Don't she? when you're playing a part like that do you know do you do you see her as, as a nasty piece of work or do you do you see do you have to look deeper and think hang on a minute there is there is something in her that that's good and that I want to try and bring out maybe. yeah no definitely because uh, part of the story is um, their mother died so I think she felt like she had to step up and look after her younger sisters and I think her way of doing that was to be protective and to be the bully to protect them so it was sort of like everyone said oh she's she's a horrible horrible girl but at the same time she's got her family that, that that's who she wants to protect so she sort of put up this barrier but I think you see her side her emotional side especially when I don't want to give the story away, but when some, something happens and it, she breaks down and I think that shows how important her family is to her and I think that's a, a soft side to her. And you're working with Rory Kinnear as your father, was what was that daddy. like? He was amazing, he is such a brilliant actor, like he would be on set and he would be so emotional and in it and then as soon as it was cut he'd be like yeah so anyway da, da, da. and it would just be like wow like, how did you even do that but he's no he's really inspiring and brilliant it'll all go wrong dad everything always goes wrong why do only bad things happen good things happen like what let's go let's go whatever you want i'll give you started quite a long time ago now so it's, it's really nice to sort of finally let everyone show it we're so proud to have won best film at the biffers and we really think it did deserve it but we can finally show everyone why why it did deserve it and yeah it's just really exciting and i'm looking forward to everyone sort of you know yeah seeing our film when you first sat down and was presented with the script do you remember the first things that you that you felt when you when you first read it it's i remember i particularly remember when I sort of got involved in the uh, script, it's such a it's such a massive cast, but we got such a brilliant group of actors, and for such an ensemble cast, it's really important to have such strong actors. And we got people you know so well established like Killian Murphy, Tim Roth, and Rory Kinnear. But then also we got such a brilliant young cast. You know we've got people like Robert Ems and Eloise Lawrence, who like me are still sort of starting up their career, which is really exciting. It's um, an adaptation from a book, so did you read the book to, to do more research and, and, and connect even further to the story? I actually read it uh, after I'd accepted the part, so it wasn't it wasn't for the job, but uh, yeah, I, I did enjoy watching the part, but it's actually sort of dulled down a bit, because it's almost, it's very, the book is very intense, it's, it's really quite dark, which it's a, it's a brilliant book, and I'm so glad we got to sort of show it on the screen. And, and with regards to your part, can you tell us more uh, about him and, and what it was that you connected to when, when you first read the script? I think, especially t around the time that I uh, accepted the role of the film, uh, I was wanting to show my sort of uh, development and my growing, because at that time I was still playing sort of you know, young kids, quite naive kids, and it's the uh, first role where I really get to show that sort of more mature side and show an adult so it was quite exciting to sort of finally you know get to come of age on screen this is a very much a coming of age story isn't it yeah yeah so yeah while Eloise's character is you know growing up and finding out about the world I was also you know 
finally playing a bit more of a mature character. She could die! Dad. You understand me? Someday she's just gonna blow us all away. You're my girl.